Gigi. It's a very interesting asset. This is a historic district. It has produced half a billion ounces of silver, where the average grade of the silver was 300 gram, 310 grams per ton silver with 15% uh, lead zinc combined. So this is a very high grade uh, silver historically. And if we can go to the next slide, what has happened in, in this district that has seen um, essentially uh, three, 400 years of uninterrupted production is that the source of the system has never been found. And Peter McGall, who is our chief technical advisor, uh, believes that our property um, on here. has- We have a sophisticated um, regulatory system uh, federally and then also state-wise. Also, even uh, beyond that, the municipalities and the local um, politics and rules, you know, must be, uh, you know, walked through as well. So when you have a project uh, cited someplace, um, you, you, you need to um, look at both the high level federal and state kind of regulatory arenas, but then also get your stakeholders on local on the ground because those stakeholders, which um, are going to be employed or are going to be maybe objecting to your presence, um, are very in, important to um, gain their confidence and um, persuade them that your project is is um, is, is good for the community. It was interesting to see how investors kind of sort of dismissed the idea that the Democrats would take the Senate. They, that just seemed unlikely for the longest time. And then the idea sort of crept up on people, like maybe this could actually happen after all. But the most extraordinary thing is what happened when it did happen. It now seems, you know, a done deal. The, uh, the news media have called the election. Of course, it needs to be certified. Uh, but the Democrats seizing control of the Senate should have unleashed this, this you know, um, macro investment consequence because woohoo, the easy money uh, spigots are going to open wide, lots of fiscal policy, infrastructure, new green deal, all this stuff is going to spend lots of money that has implications for commodities, natural resources. Um, and yet we almost had a sell the news kind of reaction when it became evident that the Democrats were going to win in Georgia. Uh, I think that's really telling. I think it's really interesting. I think it's important uh, to remember as investors and traders, you know, that, um, you know, betting on a headline is never a sure thing. Even if you get the headline that you think you're going to get, the market may not react the way you think it should. So we like to bring this right up front. Um, this, I think, is something that differentiates us from many of our peers, and that's uh, financial highlights. So if you look at this uh, this graph over four years, uh, we've grown our cash uh, balance um, to uh, just over 200 million, as reported um, on uh, the end of September. And you know we did that at the same time as continuing to invest in the uh, in, in our assets, both you know the, the efficiencies and, and long-term growth. So you can see over that same time period, we also uh, we're able to invest 150 million in capex over that time frame. You see the the rate of, of spending has been fairly consistent during that time period. We've uh, invested. Um, one of the highlights um, of results that we have reported from the 2020 campaign uh, has been some step out drilling. So our, our about 85 percent of our ounces are at the Torbert mine, and we successfully had some 25 and 50 meter step out. So. Uh, we are demonstrating that there is the potential to grow the existing resource. Um, and if we go to the next slide, um, the bulk of the remaining drill holes, um, it, just on the next slide, it'll articulate exactly where the opportunity is for growth. So this is a this is a um, a trend that I refer to as the silver highway that extends for about five kilometers. So the main resource is uh, concentrated to the lower part of the the, the map there on the, on the southern end, but we've got a tremendous opportunity to continue to make discoveries as there's about uh, two dozen past producing uh, or, or new discoveries that we're following up all, along on this four kilometer trend. Uh, get rapid production uh, to mine development and all in in-house research, field work, drilling, mine development, and through production. I think that's really what impact has proven and shown the market in the last 15 years. And uh, I think there was a chart way back in the presentation we missed earlier, but 
in terms of leverage, uh, we're, we're about seven to one leverage to the price of silver. Anytime silver doubles, uh, we go up almost you know, about, you know, five to one, seven to one to that ratio. And we've seen that in the last four runs of, of silver, both in 2000, through 2009, 2011, 2014, 16, and re as recent as 2020 in, in August and July. Um, that's, a, that's a great question. Um, you know, for me, uh, you know, studying history and my own personal experience, um, you know, gold, gold leads and then silver outperforms. Um, you know, if you look at past cycles, um, you know, if, you know, whether you're going back, uh, you know, in the, within the last hundred years or just the past few decades, um, you know, what really attracted me to silver I uh, came back to to sil the silver market back in 2018, and um, yeah. So you know, my thinking here is, you know, we you know you could get an in it and you know if you talk talk ratios, we could see it down in the low teens. And I think, well, well, I actually, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna return the nod to Sean because I, I think he touched on a lot of the key features in, in terms of the the differences, and obviously silver is is a different uh, you know, precious metal than gold in the sense that it has a, a hybrid industrial component. Um, there is an element of silver that uh, disappears from the market and is not available to come back on the market when, um, when prices are high, whereas you know, every ounce of gold in theory is available for sale when, when the prices rally. I mean, I think the one, you know, the one thing I'll add is that um, the focus on the ratio to me is a bit misguided. Um, yeah, I mean, to iterate, I guess, Sean and Lon's point, um, I think the gold and silver ratio is obviously a great guideline to, to look at. Uh, but you know, as we all know, historically, it's been uh, 15 to 1. Uh, you know, based on that, either gold has to go a lot lower or silver is going a lot higher. Um, silver market, as we all know, it's a lot smaller. It's uh, probably a one thousandth of the daily market uh, valuation of the trades on gold and the, the other larger uh, industrial metals. So, I mean, we've all seen the LIBOR and, and other uh, fairly large um, scale markets, daily manipulation. Uh, there's a lot of these banking policies and uh, large banks getting you know, finally pointed out in the markets and paying fines couple things obviously i think that the large uh, scale mining operations have the economic advantage over the smaller ones um, so there's more of an attraction to them uh, on the downside of the larger uh, facilities of course that it has a larger permitting footprint um, more likely to uh, step into the federal uh, permitting arena, so that makes that front end obviously a little more uh, of a heavy lift. Um, so, in I think that's the the story that it was. I don't think anybody thinks that today. You know, we have all these different letter descriptions for the economy. The the K description now uh, captures the divide. Um, I mean, just look at the headlines yesterday. You have the Dow hitting an all time highs as protesters storm the United States Capitol building. Armed protesters storm the United States Capitol building. I mean, how, how, I cannot imagine a more diverse set of headlines, a more opposite, you know, head scratching, like how can this be? So I, I don't think there's any question. I don't think many people at all think that the, what's going on in Wall Street reflects, reflects the real economy at all. And I think a lot of, of COVID, the rest of the time we've been able to operate uh, quite quite well and you know for better or for worse uh, i think mexico and the us are the two countries that have taken an approach of <laughs> you know let things uh, work themselves out and you know by and large uh, it's a bit it's a bit um, you know and people may think uh, one way or another canada has certainly taken a more precautious approach but in, in mexico people are going about their business you know, as Jerry uh, can attest, there was a conference in Mexico a few months ago and it was, uh, you know, booths and parties and mariachi. And <laughs> so it's, uh, you know, it's one approach. And